You know, after a um, slow start, once again, um, at, at one point, I, I kind of threw my hands up in the air and said, what is it going to take for us to be able to put points on the board? And we had played, I think, nine players um, at that point and just couldn't find any rhythm, couldn't hit shots. And it, it just, we played with no energy. And all of a sudden, you insert Jasmine Whitney into the game. And... You know, I just had flashes of Brandon Kiso coming off of those high on-ball screens, getting to the rim, being able to score. She was a great spark off the bench. And then insert Destiny Gibbs into the lineup, and she became instant energy. She was a great facilitator. She played hard. She defended. She rebounded. You know, just um, those two coming off the bench really gave us a, a different look and gave us energy that we needed that we were lacking at that point. And to look at the stat sheet and see that we scored 32 points in the fourth quarter um, is impressive to me because of the struggles that we have had throughout the course of this season. And winning just feels good. And our players, the smiles on their faces, it was great to see the energy they had on the floor, you know, high-fiving, smiles, the, the excitement from our players. We hadn't seen that in a while. So it was good to get back in the in the winning column, you know. But Georgia Tech, um, they are so talented, and they they spread the floor. They have a point guard who, for someone who doesn't shoot the three, is so quick and athletic and get, can get to the rim and makes the players around her better and gets them easy shots. And this was a dangerous team because of having four three point shooters on the floor. And I thought in the second half when they we ended up they ended up making a run when Destiny Gibbs got tired and needed a breather to start the fourth. Kawhi Bradley picks up her fourth foul. Jasmine Whitney started cramping and had to leave the game. And you took those three off the floor, and our rhythm changed. They started attacking. We were fouling. They were getting to the free throw line. And then um, those three came back on the floor, and I think we found a little more rhythm. Elena Gribble hit a big three off the bench. But Brenna Wise, what a performance. I found out that it's a school record, 13 for 13, uh, from the free throw line. But uh, she was impressive. You know, my expectations are high for Brenna, and I'm probably hardest on her. I think the whole arena can hear me calling her name throughout the course of a game. Um, and Brenna thrives on it because she's a winner. She wants to be the one to have the ball in her hands. She wants to make plays, and she loves being a leader on this team. So overall... It's a great win, and it feels good. Going back to Jasmine Whitney briefly, uh, what do you have to say about her progression as a player during the course of the season? You know, Jasmine, um, in the very beginning of the year, I think when she was healthy, healthier, um, scoring-wise was very effective. She was getting to the rim. She was hitting pull-up jumper. In our first game, she went five for five from the three-point line. And I think with the wear and tear of this season, of practice every day, um, with, you know, games – two and three games a week, um, the wear and tear of this season right before Christmas caught up with her and that herniated disc that she is playing with, um, we had to take a step back. And she's now starting to feel better. She, We are throwing everything at her. And I think now that she is feeling better, um, I still cringe every time she hits the floor, not knowing how she's going to feel when she gets up. But um, she's a fighter. And I, I love ha her having the ball in her hands to make plays whether it's scoring herself, finding people. And she's, she's going to be very good. I'm excited ab about the opportunity I have with her for the next three years if she's healthy. And I think that's the big thing is we have to just continue to work to get her healthy. Susie, so you were able to get the lead in the third, which was important psychologically. There were struggles in that third. How big was that start in the second half of the season? It was huge. And, um, you know, I'm, I've typically gone with the same starting lineup that has started the game that we started. But tonight we went with a lineup that made the run in that quarter, in the second quarter. Um, and we, we went small. And Brenna hit two threes right off the bat. You know, when you're bringing players off of on-ball screens, the success that Jasmine had had, now the, the post defender has to respect that. So she was able to drag the post defender and find Brenna for two threes. Um, in that stretch, then now they have to worry about Brenna, so it's opening up the driving lanes if someone else is helping. I thought our players did a good job of recognizing. Um, we had a few shot clock violations of taking tough shots down the stretch, um, but our players, you know, some of them haven't been in that situation, 
but you know it was kind of like I don't want it you take it was like a hot potato at some at some point but um, they just need to settle down and um, continue to attack I, I thought when uh, Virginia Tech made that run they were being more aggressive offensively and we were fouling that we were letting them get to the rim and we were passive offensively and being aggressive on the offensive end is what had gotten us the lead and we needed to get back to that. How would you say Brenna's leadership on the floor tonight impacted the rest of the team and their play? You know, Brenna is our most enthusiastic. She's our most vocal. She's one of our hardest workers. She lives in the gym. Um, she wants to win so badly and will do whatever it takes to, to win, um, from taking a charge to rebounding the basketball to knocking down shots. There are times that I know sometimes when I say I'm harder on her, um, it's because she sometimes is looking to create her shot and she could be a facilitator. I don't know how many assists Brenna has on the stat sheet, um, but it's never very many, and tonight she didn't have any. And when she drives, she draws defense. And that, what we're trying to get her to do is become a, a playmaker as well when she draws that much attention. So. It's all in her decision making, but she's a score. She has a scoring mentality, and she likes to take the big shot. And her leadership on the floor tonight was incredible. You know, she was communicating. Um, she played with a lot of energy. Uh, she was very active. Whether we were in our three defense, whether we were in man, and you know, we played undersized. So she and Destiny Gibbs both had bigger post players that they were guarding, and I thought they battled and did a great job. Yeah. What were some of the offensive adjustments uh, your team made after the first quarter? Uh, you know, trying to just run um, our motion or um, continuity offense just wasn't as successful. We needed to, we felt we needed to incorporate more on ball screens, uh, and in particular for Jasmine, Whitney, and Asia in the middle of the floor. Um, because once they got into the paint, they had options more so than the side pick and roll. Um, but just having the two ball handlers on the floor tonight, I think, was, was a big difference as well. That's a lineup we started earlier in the year and had gotten away from. And tonight I thought it was a good lineup Be just because of Hicks and how she can get up in pressure. Either one of them could run the point. But it, it was just trying to be more aggressive and getting things going to the basket um, and getting into the paint and making plays. Do you think that uh, <coughs> that two-point guard lineup is a lineup you're going to look uh, to use going towards tournament play? I mean, we've, had, we've used it um, in the past I mean, we've, and throughout games. Um, it was a lineup that we had gotten away from because the two, because Asia and Jasmine, both were struggling to score the basketball. So to have two players that uh, you know aren't effective right now, they weren't prior to tonight, um, struggling to score the basketball. Then you look to put another scorer on the floor um, and get off to a good start. But when you only have five points in the f in the first quarter, then um, I will re rethink the starting lineup right now. Susie, as a head coach, to know that you have Brenna there and that you're able to design a couple of plays in the inbounds to get her the ball, knows she's going to make it. You also have Asia, who hits free throws very well. What kind of comfort did that give you in that last minute, which can be very tenuous? Uh, Brenna and Asia were the options um, coming off of the inbounds play where we were. Brenna was the number one option, had obviously a comfort level being there. Um, and Asia was the other option. Those are the two that we wanted to have in the ball in, in, in their hands. Um, to shoot the free throws down the stretch because, you know, Virginia Tech was scoring quickly. We don't want to foul. Um, at first, we didn't want to pick up Hicks because she's so quick blowing by us. Um, then we pick up, and then we have to help, and they, she penetrates and hits a three-point three shooter in McGarity. Then we sent two people at her with Destiny because her girl was taking the player was taking the ball out of bounds. Um, so we were trying everything to slow them down and not allow them to score quickly or shoot quickly. We weren't in our three defense. I actually looked at our team uh, in the timeout and said, okay, tell me, you're out there. Are you more comfortable in our three defense right now or are you comfortable in, in, in our man? And they said three. And I said, okay, but don't give up a three. And that's when Hicks was penetrating. They're setting screens, shooting. And they ended up hitting a three. And I said, okay, we're five. You could switch it. You stay home on shooters, challenge everything. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> understanding that we had timeouts to advance and that I wanted the ball in Brenna's hands and we're inbounding the ball and Brenna's running down the floor. So it's understanding how to, how to win at the end of the game and, and make those decisions. And I couldn't get the timeout quick enough because I was mad at Brenna for giving up a three for coming off of McGarity. <laughs>